Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of PCs and EVs. In today's video, we're unboxing two RTX 4090s. Uh, we're gonna compare the visual appearances of the cards, the size of them physically. We're gonna compare them to an EVGA 3090 for the Win 3 and a 3080 Aorus Master as well uh, as a AMD reference RX 6800, just for size comparisons and everything. Now the two models I do have on hand are the MSI Gaming Trio GeForce RTX 4090. I, did, I was not able to get a Gaming X Trio, though my understanding is that it's just a slightly better binned silicon. Um, both of these have a triple eight pin to NVIDIA high, uh, PCIe 5.0, HPR um, 12 pin. And then I also have the Asus Tough OC uh, RTX 4090. And we're gonna commence with opening them now. So first things first, this is a very similarly designed box to the 3090 Ti from Asus. Uh, so it's just got a little tab right here that was taped shut. We have oh, cut that open. Pull that, open up the flaps, and then the graphics card itself pulls out. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a design on the box itself. Uh, it's got some, I don't know what you'd call that, potentially embossed um, text on there where it says tough, tough gaming, a miniature ruler up here at the top. I'm gonna open up the box. Looks like it opens from the, from the side and then it kind of presents the card to you. We're gonna lift that out now. And at the moment, we're gonna set it down and set the box aside. So right now we've got the star of the show. Jeez, this thing is massive. So it's obviously a triple fan design. And this fan's actually reversed, so I believe it would spin, the fans would spin like this, where the middle one's going the opposite direction. Interesting to see that the uh, PCB of the graphics card itself is only about that big. Um, all of this is just pure flow through. And realistically, it's just a huge empty void. Um, this back plate is definitely just there for st stability and rigidity of the card itself. Um, past here because there's quite a decent amount of just uh, empty dead space in that area. Looking at the card itself, obviously it's got your standard PCIe fingers right there. You've got a nice metal back plate, feels like. Might be plastic. Yeah, feels like metal to me though. Um, you do have a dual BIOS switch on the graphics card itself. And let's see if I can figure out how many heat pipes it has. Well, I can see the ends of six heat pipes down at this end. And there are one, two, three, four down on right before the uh, split in the heat sink itself. So it's a 10 heat pipe design. It's got the new NVIDIA high power um, 12 volt connector. Or not 12 volt, 12 pin. Uh, it's got two HDMI ports on the end and three display ports. That's gonna do it for the tough, at least for the vid video card itself. Uh, now we're gonna take a look at what else comes in the box itself. So let's set that aside. Man, that thing is huge. Definitely a four slot cooler. And I'm not sure how many cases that thing's gonna fit into. We'll have to take a look into that shortly. So in the box, okay, I get the NVIDIA the NVIDIA 12 pin to, trip, uh, to quadruple eight pin adapter, which plugs in right on the side, would plug in something a little like that. Then you also get a tough gaming Velcro cable tie. You get a GPU support stick. No, I'm not trying to mess around. That's actually what this is called. So you unscrew it, you put it at the height it needs to be, and then you screw it tight. Uh, it does have a nice little tough Asus Tough logo on it, so that's pretty nice. Uh, though kind of hilarious looking. Let's take a look at what other packaging Asus includes in there. 
Oh, so you've got something so that you can uh, set up a little stand potentially for displaying the graphics card. You get a trading card, which they definitely did last year as well with the 30 series. So it's got uh, four and a half out of six for overclocking and four and a half out of six for heat dissipation. It's a four star uh, graphics card. Then you've got your warranty book, uh, graphics card holder, how to use that. Certificate of reliability. Okay, so it's gone through some testing, yes. And a, let's see, a 63, 64 page uh, quick start guide. Because that's very brief and quick. Uh, enough making fun of uh, Asus's start guide. This seems like a really good um, card itself. It seems to be well built. It's very heavy, so I presume it'll do pretty well in thermal testing and everything. It also seems to be the only 4090 that EK so far has uh, committed to producing a water block for, which is why we needed this. We actually already have a client who wants to purchase a uh, top of the line gaming system with an RTX 4090. Now I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then we're gonna take a look at the uh, MSI Gaming X Trio. Then we're gonna look at them side by side as well as comparing size wise to previous generation cards. Up next, we're gonna be unboxing MSI's Gaming Trio 4090. So this has a simple little tab you pull on the box here. Then that presents itself, you open up all of the flaps. And then I'm going to gently slide the graphics card out. So you get presented with this sub box, box within a box, uh, which has a layer of foam over it. Let's remove that, set that aside. And then, I don't know, this graphics card might be larger than the other one. We're gonna have to take a look and see. I'm gonna set this box aside again. And let's remove the card from the anti-static All right, yeah, this thing is really chonky as well. So this actually, instead of having a uh, two slot support bracket at the back, this has a three slot, um, has very similarly sized fans. If I were to take a look at them side by side, the uh, tough is probably about that much longer. We'll get a better video of that shortly. But as far as thickness goes, I'd say they're pretty on par. They're both about four slots. Uh, the MSI card is definitely a little thinner uh, when it comes to, or not quite as tall rather when it comes to height this way. Uh, also a dual BIOS cart, also triple fan. Uh, only one HDMI and three display port at the rear compared to the two HDMI, three display port on the Asus Tough. Um, not quite as much flow through cooling. The PCB on this card does end here. So you've only got about this much flow through cooling. Um, but the fin stack appears to be a bit beefier. Uh, let me see if I can count the heat pipes. So we've got eight heat pipes that come all the way through to the end on this side, and then six that go through on the other side. So this is potentially a many, many, many heat pipe design. My brain just stopped doing math. This is potentially a 14 heat pipe design. Obviously, I don't know if some of them extend all the way through the card into the second heat sink area over here. Um, though the MSI card appears to be using a vapor chamber, they are both using vapor chambers. I have not worked with a card that's using a vapor chamber before. This will be interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the, those are the cards themselves. Let's take a look at what the MSI includes, what MSI includes in the box with their, uh, gaming trio 4090s. So they do include a GPU support bracket that says uh, Gaming Trio on the side of it. They have a quick user's guide for the MSI graphics. And then interestingly enough, their NVIDIA 12 pin high power connector only has three eight pins on the end of it for PCIe power compared to four with the ASUS Tough. 
I wasn't aware that they could decide just to do three. It's interesting to see. I wonder if it'll behave similarly to, I saw Gamers Nexus had said when they only plugged three of the four in on the founders, it would just not let them increase the power limit. So I wonder if it'll behave like that, where this has a locked power limit at 450 watts versus this one being overclockable with the, and being able to raise the power limit past 450 watts. Um, obviously, I don't know, but we'll be testing that shortly, most likely. Now, taking a look at all these graphics cards a little closer in, at the end, we have the RX 6800, then the RTX 3090 for the Win 3 from EVGA, we have the 3080 Aorus Master, we have the uh, 4090 Gaming Trio, and the Asus Tough 4090. These cards are absolutely massive by comparison with the previous generation stuff. Uh, if we go directly on top, you can see how much they've grown in length. And then next up, I'm going to show the thickness of the graphics cards. You can see how much fatter our two 4090s are, not that our uh, 3080 Aorus Master was that much thinner, but it definitely is thinner. It's also a bit shorter and has much less fin area for cooling compared to our 4090s that we do have. Uh, you can see over here the difference in size as you go left to right again from that RX 6800 to the uh, EVGA Furtherwind 3090, the Aorus Master. And then the real two stars of the show, which I gotta back up more just so you can see all of. Those things are just massive cards. And we're gonna switch down to looking at the sides of them next. So you can see over here, we've got a true two slot card. Then we've got like a two and a half slot card. Next up, we've got these basically four slot GPUs from both MSI and ASUS. Actually, the MSI one's a little thicker. Uh, because of some of the design elements of it where the plastic sticks up a little higher and then we actually have last year's 3080 Aorus Master which appears to be about the same uh, depth as the 4090 Tough. Now I don't have a 4090 Aorus Master on hand to show off but from everything I've seen online those are even more massive than uh, the 3090 not 3090 4090 my apologies Tough and 4090 MSI gaming trios. Graphics cards have gotten huge. And that's going to do it for today's unboxing, guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what your thoughts on the appearance of these graphics cards is down below.